Welcome, mercenaries. It's Osama. Welcome to the syndicate. Today, we're going to start this video off uh, acknowledging all the success that the channel has had this year. We've gained a nice uh, incremental amount of subscribers. Uh, views have went up also on a few lucky shorts that I posted. So we're going to thank all the mercenaries for spreading the intel or hooking up other mercenaries with great training, great advice, and great uh, tools for the trade. So this video is going to be a 2023 gun collection video. So every gun that you're going to see here today is a gun that I've acquired since I've done the 2021 gun collection, which y'all should check out. About 35 guns in that video. So something that was able to hold people off, um, you know, thinking about all the tools that we had then compared to now. So um, this is just an add-on of toys that have been added to the arsenal since then. So we're going to uh, cut to the chase, get right to it. All right, mercenary. So the first gun here is going to be another copy of a gun that I already had, but I ended up selling it and getting rid of it. So I had to just get another one because they're so uh, cheap. So, you know, I always got to have you a nice pocket pistol here. So what other pistol to have than the Taurus G2C? Or this one is a PT-11. And like as usual, everything's unloaded here. You know, nothing's here is dangerous on the field. So, like I say, everything here just for cosmetics. Yeah, I already know y'all know about the Taurus. You know, it's a lot of people who hate them, a lot of people who like them. But, um... They've always gone bang here in our uh, armory, so they've always had a place in our hearts. You know, pocket carry, slide right on in. You have a full-size grip to get your hand on there. The little pinky extension helps give you a good grip on the pistol. And like I said, nice grip, short barrel. You know, what else could you uh, hate on this pistol for? It even has a safety for those safety sallies out there and for those who don't know this pistol has double strike capability so you keep pulling the trigger till the round goes off great feature to have a lot more guns should have that feature but that's for another time and so you know these go about 200 bucks so you know you can't never go wrong with a gun for 200 bucks like i told people if you need to end up shooting somebody you don't want your thousand dollar kimber being in the evidence room being neglected you want to bust somebody with something and don't have to worry about the uh, pain that your wallet hit on uh, losing the gun if you don't get it back at the trial if it was a murder weapon or whatever, however that goes about. 200 bucks versus 1000 Can't beat that. So, Taurus G2 PT-111. This is a Millennium G2. So, this is before they actually started going to G2C, G3, G3C, so forth and so forth. All right, another gun that y'all probably seen on the channel, Ruger P95DC. And like I say, everything here is unloaded. Oh, well. There it go. So, unloaded, nothing in it. Everything's here with the magic for cosmetics. And um, I didn't go over it on the Taurus, but everybody knows that's a 12 plus 1. Capacity 9mm. This is also a 9mm. And I believe this one here is a 15 plus 1. And um, like I said, I have a few of these. And this one also has the restricted law enforcement magazine. So, you know, this came out during the Clinton ban era. And um, a lot of people that I've met with over the years, especially doing like security, this was their pistol of choice over the Glock for a while. And uh, I don't know if because the Ruger, you know, you get bang for the buck, budget quality with the Rugers. And like I say, um, it's just a genuine workhorse. Doesn't fail, always there when you need it. And this is also a decocker. And it functions as a decocker only. So that is your safety. Bringing it from a single action with the hammer back. So all you do is just hit that. And now it's back in double action where you have the longer trigger pull before 
the gun finally goes off. So, double single action trigger. Like I say, this is an actual, real, true workhorse pistol. I've known people who put thousands and thousands of rounds through these things, and they still function today. This came out in the 90s. Maybe that's why they call it a P95DC, <laughs> P95 pistol, 1995 decocker model. I think they also have these in a decocker and a safety model, or just a safety model. But uh, don't quote me on that, mercenaries. But this is honestly a nice gun. Got this for just under 300 bucks on the used counter in one of the uh, market stores in the, in the black market around here. Real nice pistol, full size. Like I said, the mag release is on both sides. I was prepared for it, so y'all can laugh now. So on left and right, and say decockers on the left and right, just don't have the slide stop on the opposite side to make it fully ambidextrous. But, oh, where'd it go? Oh well. We'll worry about that later, but Ruger P95DC. All right. I think I'm going to add another pistol to this one. All right. Everybody knows this bad boy here. Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum. And yes, open the cylinder. Empty. Nothing in it, as y'all can see. Nothing in the bad boy. Didn't mean to... Flag y'all with the right with the revolver, but you know, it's just a camera there. So everybody knows this bad boy here. This one holds five rounds in the cylinder. 500 Magnum, the world's largest pistol, or largest pistol caliber, whatever they want to call it. But um gives my <laughs> I think honestly to be truthful to you, this is Less recoil than the Desert Eagle because that slide on the Eagle, that steel, is going back and, you know, it reciprocates. So, that's why I think that the Desert Eagle is a little bit more harder to shoot than this. Because once you put this in the single action here with the light trigger, it just effortless. See that? Very minimum um, force needed to send it home. And like I say here with this... Nice grip. I think it's got to be a whole grip that just modeled for Smith & Wesson. But man, when you get a good purchase on this bad boy here, and you just hold it, hold it, and boom! And like I said, this model here has the compensator, not only on the sides, but it has the ports at the top. I don't know if y'all can see that. I'm going to see if I can try to put it there. Hopefully the camera can pick that up. But man, listen. Turns heads at the range. Everywhere we go, everywhere we go, turns heads at the range, and everybody just wants to shoot it. Some people are scared of it, but, you know, it's only meant for men to handle. Now, I've seen some women shoot this, too. My co-worker said that at this range he went to, a lady shot his one-handed, and I was like, well, damn, you know, that's a badass woman there. Shout out to her, whoever she is. But um, I've never tried to shoot it one-handed. Like I say, it probably won't kick that bad since... It has a lot of ports on here to try to keep the muzzle flipped down. You know, me having ports at the top keeps the pressure pointing down. Then with that, the sides, it keeps it from swaying. So it's more like a center, but it does have some type of recoil, you know, with it being a very powerful and very powerful revolver. Okay. Now we're going to go on over here. Y'all seen this one recently? Mossberg. Mossberg 590A1, military issue shotgun. I got this as a police trade-in for 200 bucks. Like I said, this is rifling in here as a smooth board. I don't know if it's been shot out. The rifling has been shot out, which I highly doubt. I think shotguns come in a smooth board, but um, don't quote me on that. Safety up here, like what they call it, like a tang safety. So, you know, black hole back, red, they're dead. And I think this one is a one, maybe a three plus one in um, two and three quarter, or maybe four plus one, and maybe three plus one in three inch uh, shells. Um, as they came with this uh, sling with the shell holder, I want to say last time I counted, it holds fifteen or a dozen. 
uh, shells in here. So, you know, fast reloading is possible. You know, you go through, boom, 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 boom. And I'm just going to do this for like an example. We'll just go pow and say that you're empty. All right. Turn over. Boom. 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 Back in the game. So, real nice shotgun. Like I said, real military issue. You know that by the trigger guard here is metal. So, of course, I had a magnet I could put there. But um, see if you can get that to focus. And if not, just trust me. <laughs> it's, it's a 590A1. And like I say, if you have a Mossberg 88 or 500, this trigger guard will be plastic. And that separates a military shotgun from a civilian shotgun. Just that metal trigger housing. So I think it's also the same way on the um, Remington 870 shotgun, pump action shotgun, which is a competitor to this, Mossberg. I've never really been a fan of Remington shotguns. I've always been a Mossberg man. So that's basically all I buy is Mossberg. Like I say, it has been a nice shotgun. Don't really have many ranges indoors that let you shoot shotguns anymore. You know, since a lot of these people really can't shoot. And I see it on YouTube all the time. People can't shoot. They hit the target holders or they break the carrier or they shoot the line down. If you have one of the old systems where it's just a wire sitting in the target down range and not like a rail where it, you know, rides on. So... A lot of less indoor ranges are allowing shotguns, which is a sad thing. Because that's most people's uh, home defense. But it is what it is, mercenaries. And like I say, Mossberg 590, more than capable shotgun. More than capable shotgun. And like I say, home defense, this is what I would stand by. Not like Joe Biden, where everybody just needs a shotgun for home defense, but... You know, this is a go-to. 12 gauge, if I didn't say that. This is a 12 gauge. So, nice shotgun here, mercenaries. Can't go wrong with a 590. Now, the next shotgun I'm going to show up is a very interesting shotgun. One that has not seen importation since the Obama administration, where they put the sanctions on Russia. So, you can't have any more Russian uh weapons coming in unfortunately but for those who already had them imported and they're just sitting on the shelves you know they're taxing a high dollar premium more power to you but this shotgun here is a nice one you've seen the video on this one this here is the sega 12 gauge i'm gonna see if that can show that sega real russian shotgun Smooth action. Doesn't have a, a bolt hole back, which would have been great, but you know it is what it is. Real nice shotgun here. Has a hold grip. And as you can see, this has been converted. Because when these do come into the States, they're more of a hunter shotgun. Looking like that 590A1 where you had the Monte Carlo stock. And you know you're shooting like Elmer Fudd. So when you do a 922R conversion, you move the trigger housing from where the pistol grip is forward. And then you put your pistol grip on. The magazine well stays put. That doesn't change. And um, then this is a... I don't know. I never paid that no attention. Maybe that might be like a holder. So I'm going to try mercenaries. Nope. Or maybe that was the old magazine. And that was the old magazine thing. But don't quote me on that. I've only had it since it was like this. I bought it from a good uh, buddy of mine on the forum that we're on. And uh, I didn't bring a 20-round drum with it, which I should have. It is because it looks badass with that 20-round drum on it. But yeah, this is a 12-gauge shotgun also. Aftermarket furniture right here in the handguard. Couldn't tell you the brand. Uh, also, I can tell you this, was that he put some type of plug in here. Can't think of the name. I want to say it's a K&S uh, brand, but I'm not too sure on that. So this shotgun can cycle a wide variety of loads. 
whether it's two and a uh, three quarter shells or three inch shells, this is cycle perfect. And look at this badass brake, people. I'm gonna see if y'all can see that. Look at that badass brake, like something that'll come off a fucking sniper rifle. That's a badass damn brake. And you know that when you shoot that, the vents pointed up, will keep the muzzle down, and then the side will keep it steady. So you have a badass shotgun. Let me just, woo, nice. Nice shotgun. Like I say, I have some stick rounds, some stick mags that came with these uh, shotguns, five rounders. Got some 10 rounders. And I got 20 round drums that all came with this shotgun from the original owner who bought this in the original configuration and did the 922R compliance uh, swap to make this a more a modern sporting shotgun. And like I say, these were imported by RWC, which is the Russian Weapons Corporation group out of Tullytown, Pennsylvania, USA, which is marked right here. And like I say, this is made in Russia by Izmash, which is one of the original factories that started making AK uh, pattern rifles and shotguns. You have made basically Izmash and Malok. If I'm saying that right, haven't been working on my Russian side, I've been drinking those Stoli this morning. But uh, <laughs> Malot and Izmash are your two famous factories out of Russia. So anytime you're buying anything out of Mother Russia, if it's not out of Izmash or Malot, stay away from it. Stay away from it. So Malot is known for making the Vepper rifles. If you ever seen Vepper rifles, and I mean... V is in Victor, E is in Echo, P is in Papa, R is in Romeo, Vepper. So they make Vepper 12 gauge shotgun, which is a competitor to this. I want to say that Izmash was first and then Malot came second. I really want to say that. And uh, like I say, you have your Russian markings on this side, the Izmash factory stamp. Uh, like I say, this is a Real, real nice piece of weaponry right here. And like I say, metal trigger guard. <laughs> like I say, it's a badass shotgun here. And I'm guessing, like I say, I haven't shot this. It's just been a safe queen. I bet with this damn break on here, this damn thing doesn't really do anything but just stay put. And if it does, it might just do a recoil just pushing back into you. Just like shooting like a suppressed rifle. More like a suppressed like bolt action rifle because you know those more have a more kick than like a semi-auto due to the bolt carrier group having a reciprocating action real nice piece here now the price i paid for this hmm converted with the extra uh goodies and everything that came with it i think i gave him like 1900 for the shotgun he he wanted two but since we ended up meeting at a uh, buddy of ours uh, gun shoot at his house, he has a nice piece of property with a range in his backyard. He knocked off a few dollars. Then I bought a suppressor from him also that he had on the form for. So it was a nice in-state transfer. So he, he hooked me up with a nice little deal because you rarely see these for sale. And if they do, they usually go pretty fast. So Sega 12 actual Russian shotgun. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Oh. All right, mercenaries, we're down to the last two I'm going to show. And these are the most two expensive that I added to the collection. So you've already seen videos of both of these in action if you've been looking at the videos on the channel. So these are nothing new. I've had these for a while. I just haven't came and put them in a gun collection video. So now is your chance. And I'm looking at this big heavy one over here on the right. So I think I'm going to do that one first and then finish off with a lighter gun. So, y'all seen it? Ah, here it is. Accuracy International AXSA, which is a Accuracy International short action rifle. Now y'all say, damn, you got all this shit on here. This is a very heavy rifle. Very heavy rifle with the can, night vision, the bipod, 
the heavy vortex scope, this uh, very light um, IR illuminator here, which I'll go over. And um, the gun is, the rifle is safe because the bolt is locked in here, but we'll just go ahead and open that up. And like I said, I'll just rest it right here because I don't have much real estate on this small TV tray, but just to show, it's already in safe. So I just put it in the neutral position. So as you can see, nothing in here and the magazine is empty. So this is my precision rifle. Very much uh, happy with this build. Took me a long time to acquire it and I'm only missing one piece that I'm going to probably get sometime next year, which is be to get rid of this IR illuminator and put a full power pick maybe somewhere over here on this side of the rifle where my fire hand could just do all the alternating of the, uh, well not alternate, but adjusting of the settings. So I'm just gonna go over this rifle real quick. Um, these rifles here are military uh, issue type rifles. I mean, the founders of this company, Accuracy International, are some top-notch guys, real top-notch. Um, if you ever read their story, how they started in a garage, and then they gypped or tricked the British government thinking there was a big company when they weren't, just to get the contract so they can get the things that they needed, you know, which was a hell of a grand scheme. I don't think that'll fly here in the States. I think they'll call that fraud. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. So, this rifle here, man, is is the bee's knees, as my buddy says. This thing, man, is lights out accurate. Like I said, these are one of the most accurate rifles in the world. Um, Ten round magazine, I have it over here, but it has ammo in it that I haven't put back in the box. So, I'm going to just leave that out. Um, <clears throat> custom barrel here. This is a proof research uh, Prefit barrel, 24 inches, and it's currently set up in 6.5 Creedmoor. Very nice, capable, short action, uh, long range cartridge. Um, my farthest impact with this is at a mile, and I was on the hair of hitting that 1,950 yards. But after the long string of fire, the barrel was heating up in the can, which is a Thunder Beast here, hidden under this Armageddon gear, started to. Uh, loosen up because it's a direct thread uh, mounted suppressor and not a quick detach so it's not like I had it on like the muzzle brake where I could just really torque it down and it'll stay put but um, like I said nice high round of fire and um, haven't hit it with mine but my buddy Aaron he has a custom uh, I think it's an MPA MPA uh, rifle I think he spent like three grand on his rifle, just a rifle by itself. And we hit at 2,100 yards with a 6.5 Creedmoor. He's running a 26 inch barrel. So like I said, we're right there neck and neck, but the little extra velocity, you know, will help further down range. All right. So we have a wee bad, wee bad mini stock pad here. Help keeps the, uh, I was about to uh, call it a, something else, but let me not do that. The cheek pad here, real comfortable, help you stay on the glass. Um, moving forward, we have um, spur mount, only the best spur, one of the best mounts in the game, $400 mount, so you know, not really playing any games when it comes to spur. Real solid, hasn't moved since it's been mounted. Like I say, real solid mount. And it has a lot of accessories. You can see the diving board here with another extended diving board on top. I'll get into that a little bit later on. Scope here is a Vortex Razor Gen 3 6 to 36. I know y'all probably seen the video on that, me doing the unboxing. This scope is fantastic. I want to say when I did my last zeroing, I gained some uh, elevation out this glass here. I've gained elevation, which is not really heard of, but the way how this scope is uh, designed, 
and I have a how I have it with this uh canted mount. So this is a um six mil cant 20 MOA uh canted uh mount that I have on here. So it gave me a little extra boost in elevation. So I have to go down in the turret to bring it down to get my impacts on paper at a hundred. So I gained a little more on the top end. Real nice scope. Like I say, these uh, zero stop here, the l -Tech Plus uh, adjustments here on the top are easy to uh, adjust for your zero, real simple. All you do is get your tool, allow us a little slot here. I think it's a two millimeter, two and a half millimeter hex. You unloose it about two turns. Then you flip the key over and it goes into the slot here and you just adjust it accordingly, tighten up the hex screws, simple as that. Parallax goes from 10 yards to 1,000 to infinity. Um, on the other side here, I'm gonna flip it over. I have a long range arms, long range arms, uh, anti-cant level, electronic level, which also has a bubble level right here to do your uh, leveling. You put it on top of your elevation drum and when you're calibrating it to however you have the orientation, I have mine vertical, it um, adjusts accordingly and it lets you know when your rifle can't, it's perfectly level. The thing about shooting long range is when you're further out, you need less margin of error and you need every advantage you can get. So that's a real nice piece of equipment. I wanna say those things about close to 300 bucks Razor is a $3,000 scope, but um, I got mine for a hell of a deal. <laughs> hell of a deal. I want to say $2,200. I lucked up and, and, and got somebody who I guess just wanted to get rid of them. And um, hey, I even uh, sent the scope back to Vortex for the upgrade. So what would happen was when you do the adjustment on the elevation, when you unlock it, when you do a dial it will sometimes slip back down in the lock position. So basically, they basically took that play out. And like I say, you only go five uh, tenths of a mil below zero before you back on your zero. So you can't do any speed drops with this uh, scope. Also, getting back on track here at the top here. And let me not do that. Try to keep this thing level as possible. We already know I have to adjust this um, bipod here. We have a Picatinny rail from um, Spur, which is actually called a Raptor mount, which you put like a Wilcox Raptor, which is basically a weapons mounted laser rangefinder on top. And you calibrate it with your uh, zero on your rifle using a laser from the unit. And basically, wherever you point your, um, whatever you point your um, center dot at when you zero at 100, before you dial, uh, you hit the button and it'll give you a range. And they have two models. They have one where you just give a range fire and there's one with full uh, applied ballistics where it gives you your uh, dope, which is data on previous engagement for you to hit your uh, target, whatever you range. Real nice piece of equipment. The one without the um, one without the AB is like around five grand. The one with AB is like double, about ten grand. So, a lot of money, but you got to pay to play in this sport. That's why I don't think a lot of people watch my videos because it's very expensive to get into. All right, back up here to the top. This is my Luna Optics ELIR3, which is a IR infrared laser illuminator so basically this will light up my target at night in conjunction with the pvs 27 here and like i said y'all seen the video on the pvs 27 this is a military issue night vision uh optic here as you can see it goes in front of your day scope and i don't have the uh, lenses open because it's not good to have the lenses get a lot of light on them because remember this is the night vision optic so you don't want to damage your lenses so, um, very nice piece of kit here. If you haven't seen the video on the channel, check it out. Uh, I'm going to see if I could probably try to roll some uh, footage of looking through them. I have uh, some pictures of 
This one is a green phosphor unit, and I have a picture of some with a uh, through a CNVD LR, which is L3 Harris's version of a long range uh, night vision clip on in white phosphor. A uh, personal preference, but the white phosphor costs more, and I think that the vision, well, not even the vision, but the clarity and the image quality is superior over the green. And I say green will get you in the game, but white is where you want to aim for. But this has served me very well. I got this from a guy. He barely used it just for observing nighttime shooting in his backyard. So it has very low hours on it. Um, very nice piece of kit here. And as I get back to the Luna here, this is a $400 unit. So basically it has a switch here and a push button switch in the back to turn it on. But this is a, a real stat adjustment, which adjusts the intensity of the IR illuminator. And basically you have a screw here and a screw here. Um, I haven't done the upgrade yet. So it's an upgrade you could do to where you could just turn a screw here and turn a screw here to adjust on the fly. And I had to pull out an Allen head and try to do it in the dark, trying to adjust. That's what happened at the arena. But I was just giving some guys a um, quick tutorial about how these night vision things work. And they were very ecstatic, very ecstatic. So um, like I say, this thing is just balls out, man, balls out. So down here, we have a really right stuff, Arca plate to go on the tripod. So sometimes I shoot on my tripod and this slides right on in, Arca clamp, lock it right on in on the tripod and we're ready to go. I'm gonna say my tripod supports rifles up to 60 or 75 pounds. So more than capable more than capable. And like I say, um, this here is the king of clip-ons. So basically, this has a sweet spot between eight magnification and 20 magnification. So you can shoot out to a thousand towards a mile with this uh, clip-on here. And like I say, very nice unit, very nice unit, well worth the money. I'm gonna say five grand for this here. Um, well worth it. Now, if you can pony up a few more thousand to get a white phosphor, do it. This is an older model with a double battery housing. You have some that have a single battery housing, which I think will probably be easier to use and, you know, less batteries, but can't compare. I don't have another one to compare with. All right. So I have this little piece right here, as you can see, for my lab radar, my recoil, um, recoil um, assisted uh, piece to go on the lab radar. So shooting suppressed is kind of hard for the lab radar to pick it up. So you put this little piece on here and it activates the lab radar when recoil has been inducted. So that's what turns on the lab radar to see the bullet down range. Um, a lot of people have upgraded to the new Garmin, which I have uh, used, my buddy Aaron has one. And like I say, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty close. My lab radar is closer to the magneto speed by a few feet per second, about three to five uh, feet per second difference. But for the price of what you're getting, it's not really going to make that much of a difference. But, you know, you do want to be accurate as possible. So real nice uh, addition here for your chronograph of the lab radar. We have here an Atlas BT-65 or the Cal which is a wider stance bipod, as you can see, nice and wide. And on the back here is like the, um, excuse that piece that always falls off. This uh, k and pod lock. So you wrench this on down and it keeps the bipod from supposedly having a cant. I think it needs to be adjusted because I always put my damnness in these things and it still has a little bit of wiggle in it. I just think that's just how those things uh, operate. If you don't want one that doesn't have the the uh, can, I think just go with like a BT-46 maybe, one that just has the pan to where you can just, you know, pan it. I think that might have been the route that I need to go, but I've been happy with the um, bipod. Like I said, you could put the legs at an angle here, you know, shoot like that, or... You want to put it backwards or have it 
at an angle. You know, you can just get real funky with this damn bipod. You can change the feed out here. I don't know if y'all can see it. You can change the feed out. Put spike feed in there if you're shooting on the ground and want something to anchor down. Real nice bipod. It's about a $200 bipod, $250 bipod. Real nice bipod. Atlas. Atlas bipod. And up here, like I stated earlier, Thunder Beast Ultra 9. This is the Gen 1. I got this when it first came out when I knew I was going to be building me a precision rifle. Very nice can. Very nice can. Made out of grade 9 titanium. So it's ultra light. Ultra light. I mean, shoom. It's about as light as two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in the hand. That's how light it is. Real light can. And like I say, very minimum noise. Minimum point of impact shift. Um, the can was about 1200 bucks before tax stamp. And uh, this Armageddon gear, high temp uh, suppressor cover is about 100 bucks. So you say including the tax stamp in that, $1,500 just hanging off right here at the end of this suppressor here. The suppressor, $1,500 with tax stamp cover. So like I say, long range isn't cheap people, but it's very fun when you're in the game. And I say, there's really nothing out here that I really can't hit. And like I say, this is set up in 6.5. So what you could do is adjust this little uh, nut. You screw it out about two and a half times. Then you can screw the barrel out and change calibers. So I have a 30-inch 308 barrel that I have on here that I swap out from time to time, depending on how my ammo's looking. And I just rotate calibers, redo a zero on here. And like I said, this is just a balls out hell of a damn setup. Hell of a setup. And I don't think I got into the price of just the rifle. And look, I didn't want that to happen. And there it goes. The damn phone ringing. Shit. Can't even believe it. But it is what it is, mercenaries. Probably just a damn bill collector calling. So we're going to ignore that. And we're going to move on to the last rifle, which is going to be something real sweet that y'all have already seen. And we'll go from there. Sit this heavy boy down. Ah. Sit the heavy boy down and... All right, and I didn't mention it, but the rifle, just the rifle by itself, like I said, that barrel is aftermarket. That was about 600 bucks. Uh, but if you just get one from the factory, just the rifle by itself, is about $8,000 before taxes. Real expensive rifle, but well worth the money. This thing will last you forever. And if you're familiar with the Accuracy International Arctic Warfare, it's the same uh, bolt and uh, receiver in that rifle. So it doesn't freeze when you're in the blistering cold of the Antarctic, and it doesn't melt or get stupid hot when you're in places like the Sahara Desert the Middle East, where it's blistering hot and 110 plus degree weather. So this rifle will actually shoot anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world, and I guarantee that. Very much of a top-notch rifle. So you can just imagine by all the numbers I gave you on that setup. And uh, I also have the Accuracy International Competition Trigger which is another $500. I know they should have just gave that from the beginning, but they did that with the new ATX, which is their competition rifle in the uh, comp in the new chassis. And they honestly did a good job with that rifle, including that trigger in there. I think for what you're paying for in that rifle, it should have came out, but don't quote me. I want to say the comp trigger came out after the AX series was released, but don't quote me on that mercenaries. But we'll get into the last one here. Yeah. So, this is the fun gun here, as the guys at the uh, range tell me when I come and shoot, and they always ask to like to shoot it. And forgive me for this dirty case. All right. I don't know what that is, but y'all have seen this. 
little fun gun. And if not, here you go. We have here a select fire. Real mat with the switch. And I'm going to see if the light will show. And I will just go ahead and flip it. Maybe we can show it. That's semi-automatic right there. And once you do a 180, full automatic. So it's a real select fire transferable machine gun. Now I've taken off the folding collapsible stock that they come with it from the factory. And it came with this aftermarket stock. I swapped out and added this Lage or Lager um, palm grip or hand grip with a thumb release here. And it still retains the heel release. So real quick to swap out mags. Uh, four grip. And this is currently set up in 45. I have other 45 uppers. I have a nine millimeter upper. So all I'll do is just swap this out, put the nine mil uh, magazine uh, holder thing inside the grip here from the top, put the nine millimeter on there, put your nine millimeter mag in, you're shooting nine millimeter. This is an open bolt machine gun, as you can see, open bolt. So most of your machine guns are open bolt unless it's like a AR-15, which all those function as a closed bolt machine gun. Also here, we have a Bowers Verse 45 suppressor. Nice sub gun suppressor. Uh, has some weight on it. The uh, Thunder Beast is probably a little lighter than this. Even though this is a pistol suppressor. And like I said, it has these coarse threads. And from Bowers, I would just put in now, I should have just done it, but it's a. I'll do it since I'm already here. And this is the last one. So, this little insert there, you will swap that out. It'll change to a 9mm uh, coarse thread pitch. Screw that bad boy on, and we're in the game. This is like a no mix silicone uh, cover. So, if you want to do some mag dumps, you can just hold it here, and the gun won't. Well, I ain't going to say the gun. But the can won't burn you as fast because after a while, with this hand uh, foregrip being on the barrel, that heat will reciprocate and transfer to this hand grip. You know, metal is a heat conductor, or all metal are conductors anyway, if you think about it. It will transfer that heat on the here, and after a few dumps, this will start to get hot. So, and if you didn't have this grip here, you would just hold it here and bye. You know what I mean? And all gone. So this one takes grease gun magazines, 30 round grease gun magazine. Locks right on into place. As you can hear that, it's in the game. I hit this little release, falls right on out. So this takes grease gun mags. And I had a guy from another form, the Mac form, and y'all seen this too, make a 50 rounder, 50 round stick. Real nice setup here. And like I say, mag dump, but this is about two and a half seconds going through this 50 round magazine. Like I say, this round count, uh, not even the round count, but the rounds per minute on this thing is about 1200 rounds per minute. Then you add the suppressor, which is a, a a back pressure uh, increaser, as this is a blowback design. So with the blowback from the suppressor, it will actually increase the cyclic rate to about 1,300 rounds per minute. So very fast shooting submachine gun here. And if you have the money to get you one of these fun toys, I would suggest that you get it. Really would suggest that you get it. Like I say, it draws all the attention at the range when you're shooting it quiet, and it really draws them around when you're shooting it loud. All right, mercenaries. Well, let me get to a price on this. So basically, if you don't know about machine guns, this is a transferable, so this is legal for civilian use. For those who don't know, these are legal, and you don't have to have any FFL for any of these here. Well, for, for, for this specific transferable, 
is a civilian owned and it will run you depending on when you bought it. I bought mine a few years ago, so the price was a little bit cheaper than what it is now. Um, it will run you, we'll just say in about $11,000 ballpark. And that could be without the suppressor. This is just the, 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 the machine pistol itself will just run you that. And by the time you add a suppressor on there, you know, another can and a stamp, depending on which one you go with. Um, I've seen them go from about as low as around now, about $10,000. And you have some like the M11, which is the SWD made one, which is after Military Armament Corporation went out of business. Uh, if you know that story about uh, Mr. Ingram and his uh, cooperation of uh, business, I forgot what the guy's name was. I think his name was Orville, but I can't think of his last name. They actually went to business together and started uh, making the Mac machine gun, which was uh, Mr. Ingram's design. And then I think it's Mitch Warble. He made the Psionics two-stage suppressor, which you will see when they originally came out in the 70s. So that's how their friendship started. And like I say, Older people that have been in the gun world, like, and I mean older people, they used to always say they used to be able to buy those Max out of a catalog. And back then, they were only about 300 some odd bucks. And I was like, man, where's the damn uh, time machine now? I tell Buff, <laughs> well, you're getting those sports beds right. You need to be picking up on some of these damn machine guns. Because as you know, in 1986, they stop uh, allowing you to create machine guns, so that's why they're so limited of them, and that's why the value is so high. So every year, the value of the machine guns go up, and that drives the prices going up. So if you have an SWD-9, those are running about thirteen, fourteen thousand, 14,000, and those are so so sweet to shoot because they only shoot nine millimeter now that one is a 45 and i can swap it between nine and 45 but if you ever seen some of those people put i forgot what type of buffer it is but uh put those extreme lightweight buffers uh if it's not the buffer i think it's the bolt in those m11s they increase the speed up to about 16 to 1700 rounds a minute with a suppressor, which is dangerously fast. I've seen a guy dump a 50 round mag in almost one second. It just went Burr! and it was over with. And we were all just looking like, damn, you know, we just basically just ate it, shit it out all at the same time. But transferables are real nice if you can afford them. And like I say, if you can get one, get one. Now, the other uh, machine guns that you see people shoot, like the Glocks with a switch. Those are what they consider post-sample machine guns, which are only for people with a 0702 uh, SOT, special occupation, special occupation tax, uh, FFL. And then you also have pre-samples, which are also held by 0702 SOT, FFLs. But the special thing about those pre-samples is you get to keep those once you surrender your license. So I know when I was getting into the game, I was going to get me a few pre-samples just to hold on to. And then whenever down the road, you know, I gave up the license, I always had me some toys to play with. But the only thing about those is once you surrender the license and say you die, you have to uh, give the machine guns to the ATF, or you can sell them to another FFL. But nobody in your family can hold on to them except for you. Just like doing a tax stamp as an individual over a trust. Only you can be in possession over a trust, which is it's assigned to a makeshift trust to where people in the trust can own and possess them legally. So, just a little... um overrun about the machine gun things. I get a lot of questions about them. So there you go, mercenaries.
All right, mercenaries. Thank y'all for tuning in. To come check out the General Osama, show off the new toys that he's added over the years. And like I say, as you can see with the stuff that I've purchased and things that have, you know, been added on to certain guns that have taken a lot of uh, funds from other things. But like I say, we're just here to enjoy the time that we have on Earth and life is too short to be cheap or holding out. Don't cheat yourself. Treat yourself, says Osama. All right, mercenaries, thanks for rocking with the general. As always, stay safe, stay legal, stay armed, stay dangerous, stay prepared. Osama, out.